If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. In order to determine the energy that is stored on the capacitor, we can consider using the following equation whereby we have one half multiplied by the capacitance multiplied by the potential difference squared. Now it's convenient to use this equation for energy because the question gives us the potential difference created by the battery as well as the capacitance. Now since the question wants the answer in microjoules, it's all right to leave the capacitance in microfarads. So we can simply plug in three microfarads and then multiply that by the potential difference of six volts squared. And when we work that out, we should get 54 microjoules. It comes out in microjoules, again, because we're using microfarads for the capacitance. So this is the correct answer to part A. Now, one of the keys to answering part B is the following. And that is when the battery is disconnected from the capacitor, the charge stored on the capacitor will remain constant. So that means that whatever charge Q was present originally on the capacitor will remain on the capacitor even when the battery is disconnected. Now we know that charge is equal to capacitance multiplied by the potential difference. Remember that the capacitance was three microfarads and then the potential difference was the six volts. And so we see that originally there were 18 microcoulombs of charge present on the capacitor and that means that after the battery is disconnected, this will still be the charge on the capacitor. Now, another important aspect of part B is that the distance between the plates is doubling. And we will see that that's going to change the capacitance. Because capacitance depends on the area of the plates as well as the distance D between the plates. And if we double this distance, or multiply it by 2, that means the capacitance will be divided by 2, because the capacitance and distance are inversely proportional. So we would take the 3 microfarads, and we would have to divide it by 2 to get 1.5 microfarads as the new capacitance. Again, that's because we're doubling the distance between the plates. So let's set the new capacitance to be 1.5 microfarads. Now we are ready with these two values to calculate the energy stored. And because of the two values that we have, it's going to be better to use this equation for the energy stored. And so we'll go ahead and plug in the charge of 18 microcoulombs and then the capacitance of 1.5 microfarads. And then when we process that on our calculators, we should get 108 microjoules. And it comes out in microjoules again because we're using microcoulombs and microfarads. So this is the correct answer to part B. Now on to part C, which tells us that the battery is subsequently reattached to the capacitor, but the plate separation remains the same as in part B. Now because the plate separation remains the same, that means the capacitance is going to remain the same as it was in part B. So the capacitance now is still 1.5 microfarads, but because we are reconnecting the battery to the capacitor, the potential difference comes back to being 6 volts, just like it was originally. So basically anytime the battery is connected to the capacitor, then the volts of the battery becomes the potential difference across the capacitor. So we can go back and calculate the energy one more time using 1 half times capacitance times the potential difference squared. And when we plug in and process, we get 27 microjoules. So this is the correct answer to part C. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I will do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.